Crypto. Welcome to this instalment of the Understanding Crypto, the podcast that is designed to try and demystify the weird and wonderful world of Web3. Now, ordinarily on the show, we talk about some of the basic stuff around Web3. We talk about NFTs, blockchain. We've talked about the merges between POS and POW and all that kind of good stuff. But occasionally we get the opportunity to have amazing people on the show. I'm James Burt, by the way. He's Captain Crypto. Say hello. Hello. I'm not called that, by the way. He's called Paul. But yeah, there we go. But I, I like to call him Captain Crypto. That's like a Web3 name. You'll thank me. When, when, when you become undocked and it's just a picture of a boat across your face, you'll thank me. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, but today we've also got uh, some guests live in the studio, which we're very excited about. I have been watching the unfolding of this project since pretty much its inception. I've been very excited to, to watch what's going on. And I'm even more excited to have one of the co-founders and one of the main people behind the project in the room. If you are a football fan and you're a fan of the world of Web3, you've probably heard of Wagme United, uh, which is classed as the Internet's team. This very interesting Web3 project um, is based on the concept of we're all going to make it, which is what Wagme actually stands for. And in 2020, they actually bought Crawley Town Football Club. Go on the town, up the Red Devils and all that good stuff. You might have been seeing them. You might have seen them on Sky Sports recently because they beat Fulham. That's right. They beat Fulham in the Caribou Cup and they've got Burnley in the next round at the time of recording. By the time you listen to this in a couple of years, maybe they've won the Caribou Cup. Maybe they're in the Premier League. Maybe they've won the Champions League. Who knows what is possible? That's what these guys are going for. Uh, but we've got Hunter, who is one of the main people uh, behind uh, Wagami United, and he's in the studio. Hunter, good morning to you. Good morning. I'm I'm excited to be here. And yeah, uh, Premier League. Who knows? It's it's the goal. How did how did this whole thing get started? Are you a football fan? I see you were adorned in the uh, the Chromie Squiggles top. I, I, had, today. I had to bring the Chromie Squiggles. Had to bring it. Had to, to bring studio. it. Yeah, you know, I, I played football my entire life, and it, it's I think one of those things that's just ingrained in me as a passion. And everything I do business wise is something that I'm deeply, deeply passionate about. So. Um, when I got a text message, I woke up in the morning, I got a text message and it was literally, do you want to buy a football team? That was the message. It's <laughs> a good place to start. Um, and I, I remember I, all I responded was yes. That was it. <laughs> and then I went, got right away, it wasn't what? like, what's going on? Like who re like, it was just, yeah, I meant like it, that's, that was just my mentality on it. And uh, obviously a lot of things happened after that text message and a lot of crazy unexpected things have happened along that journey. Yeah. It's just been amazing. When so the person who ever sent you a text saying, "Oh, do you want to buy a football club?" Was it that the intention was always to buy a sports team using a Web three kind of model to to fund it, or was it the case that a, a club had, had? Were you guys on the lookout for this, or had a club become available, or w which way round did it actually happen? It all started at a dinner the night before. Um, a bunch of crypto punk owners had a dinner, and one of the they just start pitching ideas. Oh, it'd be cool to do this, cool to do this, and. Uh, a lot of the people involved are sports fans and betting backgrounds and uh, you know, obviously watch football. And uh, that was one of the ideas. In the morning, they you know, were like, let's do it. Like, let's actually, that was a great idea. Let's ha make it happen. And um, I think the Web3 component is like, we're all Web3 based people. And if you look at the world around you, right, there's all these different industries right now. Every single one of those industries, just as we've seen with e-commerce and social media, like Web3, will come in and disrupt your industry, no matter what industry you're in right now. Yeah. So so the, the you go out for the dinner the night before, the crypto punk's like, yeah, we should definitely buy a, a club. Why don't we do that? The next day, the text comes around just to verify. You definitely want to buy a club? Yeah, I'm definitely in. How did you go from that conversation, that dinner, and that group of people to going, yes, we're going to do it, to ending up in Crawley Town? Um, well... <laughs> <laughs> When, it's it's funny. Like, I'm like, assuming that dinner. I, even when I hear it, I'm like, that'll never work. I'm assuming like, that dinner wasn't in Crawley. Uh, no, it was not in Crawley. Right. No. <laughs> it was somewhere much more glamorous. They're in Gatwick. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, were you in the States when you were having this dinner? So um, uh, most of the owners so, yeah, based in the States. Yeah. Uh, most of the owners are actually based in LA. Um, <laughs> I mean... Uh, That's a long way from Crawley. Right. And the best part about it is a lot of the owners are friends. Like we're... It's not like... Oh, we just sent out a bunch of texts and we're like, well, let's see who we can get rent, you know, money from random people if they just want to give us money. It was, I mean, we're, we all text each other about other stuff and we, you know, we get, go to the bars or we'll go see uh, like baseball games together and, you know, we'll hop in Twitter spaces together. Like we're, we're just friends that love Web3 and this is a, a venture that we all are deeply passionate about. Um, but yeah, like the, the dinner happened, the idea went, and then it was immediately like, 
money started flowing in and the search started. It was a very quick timeline. And that search took um, about about two months. Um, and then there was a month of like those final things getting you know worked out and making sure the details and all your due diligence is done. Um, and then I think April was when the deal finally got finalized and it got announced to the world. Um, but you know, everybody asked like, was Crawley like immediately, and what, what's the process for buying a team? Well, usually uh, not every team is for sale, right? Uh, clubs are owned by somebody and they're very passionate about it. And you don't really see a lot of club uh, sales happening every single year. Uh, but obviously every once in a while, if you make a bid or, you know, an owner is like, oh, I think I, you know, if somebody made an offer, I'd, I'd leave. Um, you have a list of teams that you can obviously go and uh, try to make an offer on. And we found uh, a long list of teams that I think initially met our uh, kind of like what we were looking for. And then Crawley just kind of like hit the nail on the head as being this club that has a really long history. Uh, they finished well the, the year previously. Um, and they just needed that, like, you know, that TLC to, to really promote them, uh, on the field to the next, I think, division up. But the best part about this is like, we could do this with any club. This was really an idea on, can we take an existing model of a web two business or sport in the sports industry? And without just coming in and saying, it's a DAO, we're going to throw, you know, <laughs> NFTs at it. The tickets are NFTs. If you want to buy concessions, it's NFT. Like we were like, all right, let's be buying a pie with an NFT. Right. How, how crazy would that be? <laughs> like we're being very, very selective on, okay, web three can come in and absolutely change this business model, but as its own individual vertical. And over time, as we educate the community, as we educate fans, as the technology progresses, we can slowly saturate uh, Web3 into the you know every single mm. thing that's happening around the club. Um, but yeah, there is, I think, a little bit of a too early thing that we've, we're seeing a lot of people do right now. There's been, in, in the... It, in the UK here, there's been some horror stories with people buying football clubs and Berry Town. You've probably heard about. Yeah. Very. So, was there a lot of in negotiation needed with the football league? Because they, we here in the sports media here in the UK, they say about a fit and proper persons test for ownership. Right. Was there like hurdles you had to overcome with yeah. the football league yeah. before I mean, you could the buy EFL the team? Has, has a very, uh, very good uh, due diligence process yeah. on their end, making sure that everybody involved on the ownership side. So, how is did you qualified. get them comfortable with the fact that there's this group been formed? I think it also like the background of it is that this like we've been very very strong on this isn't a toy right okay. this is a business we're coming in we have experience not only in the sports industry but also in the M&A industry um, and running all these different types of businesses and everybody involved has it's not just crypto bros like a lot of these people that are on serious there are serious yeah. operators right um, so it's it's I think that plus the fact that um uh, we're we're bringing in. We're, we weren't just going to come and be like, all right, we're kicking everybody out. We're bringing in very qualified people, and I think them hearing that plan uh, made them more comfortable as well. One of the things I've been most impressed with, because when I saw the announcement initially, I thought there was definitely the danger of, oh my God, they're going to come into this t club. And exactly as you said, like all the tickets this year are going to be NFTs. Obviously, you guys have done great work because, you know, the um, the season tickets sold out quicker in two weeks than they had the previous whole season. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of infrastructure being bought in. There's been obviously a lot of funding that's going to actually making the club better rather than it just being like, like I say, it's, it might be for all intents and purposes, for those of us who understand Web3, it would be classed or deemed as like a project but it's definitely the language around it has been about there's no talk of NFTs in the standard Crawley social media. Wagme has been kind of like its own social media entity. 100%. You're talking about that kind of aspect in that way, but you're leaving the, the club to sort of run as it as it has been. Yeah, when, I mean, I, I think that comes back to the, like, don't just throw NFTs and yeah. shove it down everybody's Yeah, how, how do you tell like, the 60-year-old season ticket holder like explain to him what an NFT or her, what an but NFT. The crazy <laughs> thing though is like a lot of like, you know, 10 to 18 year olds come up to me and they're like, what's crypto? And it's really? like, oh wow. Like uh, the the demographic here isn't, because you know, in America right now, the cool thing to be a kid is like trading stocks. And like, you know, the eight, we really saw this with like the AMC stuff um, and like flipping and NFTs. And you know, that's, that's really cool in America. And that's not really the culture out here. No. Um, and I think 
as long, and it kind of goes back to the education part, lending a hand out, being, being willing to educate your fan base and take the time and be like, all right, we know this isn't the norm for you guys. Um, so yeah, that's, I think, part of the process. So wag me really is that like edgier web three more base for trying to be the internet's team there. And then Crawley is still a football brand and club. And uh, I think it's a two way path. On the ownership side and Wagme side, we're trying to educate and take our crypto fan base and our NFT fan base and educate them about the football club and football league. Yeah. And then on the football fan side, we're trying to say, all right, like this NFT and crypto thing exists over here. When you're ready to dip your toes in, mm. come. But if you just want to watch football and go to the games and watch highlights, you can do that. We're not going to be like, you have to do it. You can only watch games through, you know, holding this NFT. For the fans that are willing and want that more and are willing to experience it, they can own an NFT and get that extra little bit. And that's why NFTs, in my opinion, are like the ultimate fan and community building device because mm -hmm. it allows you to, and you guys know this through mm -hmm. through you, your, your use of the technology, um, it really allows you to do some special things and enhance that experience or you know offer the ability for voting. And that was one of the big things that we experienced was allowing fans to vote on a player decision, which you've never really seen before and you've uh, and that's you've operated that that's that's running yeah you've done that yes yeah, yeah. and and it was a little nerve-wracking right because <laughs> <laughs> well, i mean it's it's not like a small decision we're talking like a hundred thousand yeah. dollar plus you know a hundred to two hundred thousand dollar decision um and we said the fans like do you want a goalkeeper a defender a midfielder attacker and uh, we just kind of sat back and we're like, let's see what happens. Uh, and obviously the, like a large amount of the fan base was like, we need a midfielder. We absolutely need a midfielder. Um, and I think at the time, if you had asked me, I would have made maybe a different decision just based on like my gut feeling and seeing them in training, but they voted midfielder. It was like a 54%. And then I think even the next closest was like 28% and it really trailed off from there. Uh, but yeah, they voted midfielder. The results came in a few days later where, uh, we signed a player who was a midfielder and, you know, fans were like, all right, they did it. Like it works. The process is. So you allowed NFT holders to vote, but you, I read some of you also allowed season ticket holders to yeah, vote as well. I, I think there's going back to that issue of not everybody who's a Crawley fan for the last 30 years understands NFT technology. We're trying to still allow them to have that voice instead of saying, well, you don't get it, you're not in, you haven't done it, but we still value the fact that you're you're here alongside of us. And hopefully over time you start to, you know, maybe dip your toes again into NFTs. Those more traditional fans then, did you get any pushback from them? Are they sort of excited to be more a part of the club or do they, is it a traditional mentality of like, we pay our money, we come and turn up, the manager makes the decisions and the backroom staff, we just want to see our team play. Or, or were they more like, this is unbelievable. We can actually choose what player we want because people in, you know, fans are the most opinionated people on the planet. Well, let me, let me tell you something. When the news came out that we were acquiring Crawley Town, I had DMs. I mean, my inbox was <laughs> flooded. And like the comments on the posts were, I mean, I, I always make this joke, but I had to look up some of the slang that was being like, <laughs> like I was like, what is this? Um, and then I was like, oh, that's not very nice. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was bad. It sounds like football fans. Yeah, yeah. no. And, well, and I wasn't expecting the, like, I was really not expecting that like harassment and, and that really strong opinion from, from the football fans. But um, in the beginning, they were like, these guys are absolutely going to come in and just muck it up. And uh, obviously now that is completely 180. They're really confident in our ability to, to I think, bring in players, bring in staff. Um, and they, I think they trust the process of, okay, like they had a vote and they did it and mm. they're using this technology in a responsible and cool way. And, uh, let's see what they do next. It's strange. Cause there's a culture in the UK, probably Europe really, where football club owners or sports team owners are vilified they just are. for, just for being an owner they of, are. A, of yeah, a sports default, team. Yeah. Whereas uh, I don't think it's like that in the U S is it like uh, owners are, not put on a pedestal, but they're, they're not, they're certainly not vilified. No, for. but like, look at Mark Cuban. Like he shows up to the games and he's cool. Like, on the, you know, they'll show them during the game, sitting in the stands and, you know, watching the team. And um, here it's like, well, on. there was, we was talking before you came, came into the, the studio. I think that's because there's been a repeated cycle of notable clubs, like a fall from grace doing really well, new owner, 
the owner asset strips the club, sells stuff off, you know, sells the training ground to a developer to build houses on or flats sure. on. And, and, and whether that's because economically they need to do that or whether that was their intention at the start, we'll never know. But Right. Well, I mean, man, you right now, you could well, make some very interesting, I mean, just, you know, yeah. there there's some very interesting financial, you know, decision making happening there. In our heads, though, it's like, Crawley Town is, and, and the best part about this is we're not coming into this just saying, all right, how do we improve the club? How do we build out a Web3 side? We're looking at the town even saying like, all right, how do we have a positive economic impact on the town? How do we improve the everything surrounding this? Um, and not even financially benefiting us, but like if we do well with the club and do well with, you know, building training grounds or building youth academies and, uh, you know, doing stuff like that, does that really improve everybody around us and you know, put the town on a path uh, towards a better future um, where I definitely see where a lot of these other clubs are the second these people come in, they're going to just find a way to put money in their pockets. Yeah. They'll make some money and none of the owners will show up after the first season. Like I, I, totally understand that after learning more about you know football history yeah and i think that's where this vilification of like football club owners comes from did, did you when you started to get all those dms and that sort of like hatred to the level you're having to sort of look up what the slang term is did you think like what the hell have we done here because obviously like within the the crypto space there's certain people who've become almost i guess micro famous in that environment and again a lot of people are flag waving fans of what web3 and that sort of technology is going to do and this is like the evolution of the future like a pal of mine for example, used to own Huddersfield, and he was and he was in in really really in, implicated in building a new stadium, create you know creating a huge number of jobs. They did like a um, stadium share with the rugby club. He's like people still hated me. He's like we literally we uh, we added we got a hundred million dollar a uh, hundred million pounds off the council to build a stadium. We created new jobs. There's a thousand new jobs there. He went and every single game I went to, people were like Terry is a work He's like I can't do right for doing wrong here. Like did you at any point when you were reading through those DMs, you're like, what have we got ourselves into here? Because in the crypto space, like people are waving the flag for what we're trying to do, but. In the real world, people are like, they hate us before we've even landed on yeah, the British I mean, soil. I mean, that like was a little scary to, to have that reaction. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> like, but like, we come from the crypto background. So our, you know, my whole career in crypto, it's been, oh, the, you know, you idiots buying Ethereum, you're going to lose all your money and like NFTs, you're like you're buying these JPEGs and you're dumb and, you know, you're gonna, it's all going to go to zero. And so you're used to the hatred. By I now. was used to it. So like <laughs> I was fine. Uh, in, the, in the beginning, I, I'll tell you this though. I went to the first game of the season this year. It was away at Carlisle, and I was sitting in uh, the away end with all the fans. It was really fun. The pregame, we went to the pub. It was, you know, I had Carlisle. People, that was an experience. Yeah, that was a real experience. <laughs> uh, Welcome to football. Yeah, in Carlisle. <laughs> in Carlisle. Um, I, <laughs> I will say this: when our the, the game was not the best performance of the team. It was, uh, you know, you could tell it was a new squad. They're trying to find that synergy and um, they struggle on the pitch a little bit. But when our fans were getting mad and they were yelling, they were, you know, just the, they were yelling our own players and they were like, you know, Betsy, what are you? Just wild things. And I'm standing there next to them and I have people being like, Hunter, you got to get rid of this guy. You're going to do this. Like, what are you doing? Like, oh, you've mucked, you've uh, last year. We just should have done what we did. Last. Like they're like yelling at me and I'm like, Oh, okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe I should have sat on like the director's box away. From, and then, I was, but I think that's the best part of the experience, though, yeah. is that I'm willing, as long as there's not like a physical altercation or something, I'm willing to like listen to that and be there for like the low points because I'm also willing to sit with the fans through the high points, like Fulham. Um, I, I think it's also I've really enjoyed that community aspect, like the same way you guys have built out this community on clubhouse and you know, this, any, any way we do this in web three, this community building aspect, everybody's together. It's one, it's a team. You're, you're just, you're one in one. That's why I think it's been so cool for the owners to be on the field, playing games of fans, uh, you know, holding, uh, signing events and the owners show up holding, uh, you know, AMAs on Twitter for anybody to ask questions and, 
there's this like barrier that's been removed and it's mm. really changing the way you can see that yeah. through the social media like the, the even like I was the other day but in the but ahead of the Fulham match and the lads are coming in whoever's doing the social media has literally got their, their fist out and they're fist bumping all the all the players as they're coming in I'm like this is actually this is is that you so guys that is that's me um, but that is really like I say removing the fourth wall you're now getting set and, you know there's brilliant TV shows you might have seen them like All or Nothing where they go behind the scenes of a club but obviously that's still curated over a season mm. it's highly polished it's highly produced but what you guys are now doing with your socials is every day i'm getting to see genuinely how a football club gets run yeah and those community engagements and the and the players knowing that there's always you know that community i think from what i've watched you guys have taken the web3 mentality of community and you're actually taking it to crawley and doing it without a doubt in the real world yeah so my my theory on how I operate every business that I'm involved with is I think we're about to see a huge shift in the way businesses do business and who's going to be the biggest and who's going to grow. And, um, you know, social media will always be present. It'll be a huge part of your business. But the business model that I think we'll see the future really play out is the community economy. It'll be the one, the businesses that, focus on community building, value back to customers, uh, engaging with customers, letting them know that there's an emotional connection and they're part of something, not treating their customers like walking billboards or just as a, you know, well, your cost of acquisition was $10. So, you know, we need to get $10 out of you. The second that mentality switch happens, you're going to see those businesses in two to five years be the biggest ones. Mm -hmm. And, that, you know, I see what Gary's doing with vFriends and I'm like, he's going to get it. He's, he's building this community, giving back, engaging, forming this thing that where people want to wear VFriends. They're like, I'm part of this. I'm, I, I own the IP and I, I get the part of it. And they're not, you know, the, the absolute flip side of this is Gucci will sell you, you know, a sweatshirt, a sweatshirt for a thousand dollars, but they don't give a crap about you. Whatever. Yeah. Great. You bought it buy another what we don't care like <laughs> yeah. there's no community there right yeah. and you don't really have an alliance other than oh this is a flex well this was this was uh comes on to a point that we made up earlier before you guys turned up so we were looking through one of the i think it was a bloomberg article about what you guys have been doing down down at crawley and uh, you know maybe the you know the numbers might not be entirely accurate but there's you know you, the the raise that you did so there's i think four five thousand four hundred members of the community who own ten thousand nfts which has raised x amount of money in order to fund the the plans that you've got for the mm. for the project let's call it Liverpool, who've got a substantially, and no disrespect, they've got a slightly larger pool and client Immediately, you're like, I was like, the same he said Liverpool, I was like, oh, here we go. But, but it, it just goes to show how you've got to really understand how these tools operate and deploy them correctly. You can't just, as you say, use fans as a walking billboard or just because, so let's say, for example- I think they've all had a go, haven't they? Liverpool have had a go, Barcelona have had a go at an NFT yeah. of some sort, and they've all, yeah, there's a couple no of utility, clubs There's go. no value there, is there? When you look behind, what do you get? It's sort of like, oh, maybe early access, or you'll get, you know, like access to the TV channel, whatever it may be. That's not what this technology was designed to do. It's a right. square peg in a round hole. Right. But this I comes all the way back though when I talked I talked to a ton of Web2 companies because I do a lot of consulting through our company and it's like, you can't just say, all right, we have an NFT, we'll sell it and then we'll give them something. Like they just get this. Great, we did an NFT, we made $2 million, on with it. This technology has to be used intentionally and I think that's why with our group of people, I mean, Pixel Vault, Adidas is involved. Gar like, There's really, really big people that understand this all the way to its core and understand the, the wildest lengths that you can go to. And I think also that, that dreaming aspect of, oh, what if this were to happen? Oh, we can do that. Um, that is what sets us apart from a company that just comes in and does, all right, we'll do an NFT. Mm. This is what we've seen. So is the plan for Wagme to purchase other sports teams potentially um, as, as this goes on almost become like the um, talking of Liverpool, you've got the, the what's the holding company called that, that own Liverpool? Um, the, 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 the candies. Fenway Sports Group. Fenway Sports Group. There we go. Yeah, to almost become like the <laughs> guys in the free. building, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> the, Social uh, media done. <laughs> knowledge almost hub. become like the web free version of a Fenway Sports Group, so to speak. I, yeah, I, I can... I, I, and I, I understand if you can't say too much. Yeah, but I would even compare that also, but like look at what Rebel's done as like a brand with, you know, having an F1 team and motocross and like they just 
they're cool, right? Yeah. Um, Wagme might not have a sports drink, but there's ways for us to have, you know, on the Web3 technology side, different things. Yeah, because Red, Red Bull Motor Racing have a football t- soccer team, yep. football team. Yep. Um, yeah, all sorts, didn't they? Yeah. So I, I think right now, because everybody asks this question, oh, so you bought Crawley, what's next? You're just going to go into the next thing? Crawley is our main focus. Like, there's, it, we're business people, so we understand that when you make an acquisition, when a, a business is new, it's, it is all you're focused on. And you get that working, you get it sorted, and as that scales and things and you know the friction points are smoothed out, you can slowly allocate, all right, now we have, this is on the right path, where, where else makes sense as like a synergy or is there an opportunity somewhere? And if it, there is, you know, we can venture into that, but I don't think anything too soon is gonna be happening. I have so many questions. We've only got half an hour left. <laughs> but the, on a, on a, I'd love to know how you got into Web3, first of all. But okay. P- pause that question for the minute while we're talking about Crawley. The, the technical aspects of crypto, which we speak about a lot on the podcast, the on-ramp, the off-ramp and stuff like that. How have you, the acquisition of Crawley, was that in crypto or was that in pound sterling? And, you know, you obviously, the club needs pounds sterling right. to function to right. run and and obviously i'm guessing your nft was on was was ethereum was it was on eth yeah I'm it, guessing. Was, it was me yeah, yeah. So, so you're obviously having to then swap that out move that out move that around right. Is, has that been challenging at all at the, at the volumes that you need to do it because people don't often see that you see like gary building v friends and, and other big crypto projects where they're actually physically employing staff and, yep. and there's still that difficult point of how do you go from crypto into the real world right. and pay people salaries right so the one thing i'll say is it gets even more complicated uh with us obviously because now there's dollars pounds and ETH. <laughs> um so it's a little bit of a nightmare uh but no like the, the club had to be purchased through because the efl and with kind of the way things are regulated over here in europe um that you can't just come in and buy a club with eth um so yeah, there's a more traditional approach to how the team was purchased. Um, as you know, the NFT sale happened though, there's you know tax events that need to be covered. So that's taken care of. Um, and then obviously there's a financial strategy around, you know, how you, where funds are allocated and how, uh, I think when money comes in, we handle it. I uh, can't get too into that, yeah. but you know, it's it's interesting. I will say this, the more uh, that this venture has played out, the more like we have issues of like payments or like conversions and stuff. Um, every single time I'm like, why can't we just do it with ETH? It's, it's so like, yeah. like it solves all it, the it's, problems. It's wild. Yeah. One ETH like, is every, one ETH here and it's one ETH where you are and it's right. one ETH like, anywhere in the world. Every, yeah. every single day I'm like, oh my God, like I, this, like the, every time we have an issue, it's just like, yeah, wait until like crypto is widely adopted and everybody's like, well, how did we operate like that for the 50 years of, a, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, like, just crazy to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, the players even are like joke about like, oh, like when are we getting our bonuses in crypto and like stuff like that? <laughs> or like, you know, we'll be at training and people will even be like, you know, oh, if I hit the crossbar from here, you get me a mutant, like, like, like jokes <laughs> like that. Like, um, <laughs> Crossbar challenge ain't worth half a million dollars, mate. But okay, sure. I like the fact that you're enthusiastic and interested. And um, when you, you mentioned sort of going back to the beginning, when you guys as a collector were sort of looking at clubs, you know, Crawley, you mentioned it earlier, they were not a, a team that was down and out, if that makes sense. They'd done really well. They'd done, they'd already been quite clever. Um, I think actually some of my pals used to own it, weirdly. There's a guy, a load of oh, wow. people that I go out walking with, and I think one of them was, was the ex chairman. Um, but they'd b- done things like they bought in a guy called Mark Wright, who's like a TV celebrity, and he was like doing his last season. He played with his brother there, so they'd already done stuff that got a lot of focus and attention onto Crawley. So, was it as part of the remit? Were you looking for a club that because this wasn't a club that really needed fixing, as you said, it needed sort of like an injection uh, it, of TLC, but it didn't need saving from the brink, if that makes sense. Yeah, Did that make I mean, it a more valuable proposition, or was it more of a added pressure because it was you got to take it from good to great rather than save it from the brink I, so obviously like they weren't in any uh fears of being relegated last season they finished 12th um i i think when we looked at crawley it was like what happens if you bring in really the best staff and the best players and you just offer the po- best possible possibility of getting to league one um 
Crawley's highest league they've been in is League One. So getting back there would be phenomenal. Um, but really, it just felt like, and I don't want to say this in a, a unfair way to Crawley, but it felt like a blanker slate where, wow, the stadium can grow more. We, yeah. we can kind of uh, come in and the staff and players and the people that we've all talked to within the organization were like, yeah, we're down for Web3 and doing things unorthodox. Like, why, like what do we have to lose? Like, let's do it. Um, and it's that I think that's been probably one of the most positive parts about this is that uh, everybody involved all the way down to, you know, the guy who's taking care of the field and the pitch um, are just like, we're, we're down for it. We love it. You have a crazy idea. Let's make it happen. Um, I've had some requests like that have just been like, uh, can we do this? And I'm waiting for like them to be like, no, like not a chance. And like, I'll ask Kevin something. He'll be like, yeah, like, oh, let's do it. And I'm like, okay, like <laughs> if you're in, like, let's do it then. Like, uh, that's it. I think that's special. Like when you're running a business, make sure everybody who's involved is like on that same cultural mentality of like, let's, let's do it. Yeah, for sure. What's the, how, how are you sort of, cause you mentioned a minute ago, obviously you, you were involved as a consultant, a web three agent advisor to sort of other brands and companies. How are you now sort of managing your time between, cause every time I, and again, I don't know who's doing the social, it has that guy is a social wizard, but um, Insane. You're, you're there like in the crowd all the time, straight after like you're on the pitch. I love the tweet. Like we do not, we officially do not um, endorse running onto the pitch, but everyone's like retweeting it. Go, let them, let them invade the pitch. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> and then you're saying, Hey, where's the, where's the parties at for, for tonight? So you're obviously very like proactively involved in the club, but you've got a, you know, a, a job to do in other places as well. Yeah. How are you, counterbalancing you know pr predominantly i'm imagining like u.s clients for an advisory business and and being sort of a founder of a league two football club in crawley yeah like three hours of sleep okay um, sure yeah <laughs> uh i think really it's been a learning experience for me um because like i'm really new to this whole like i this i'm into the fire really because when i got into web three which was like the end of 2020 beginning of 2021 um, I had bought crypto since 2014, so it was aware and kind of native to everything that was happening, but NFTs really clicked for me. I mean, the second I saw them, uh, I pretty much liquidated every single dollar in my I mean, retirement account was gone, savings account was gone, stock portfolio was gone, everything for about 500 to $1,000 uh, was into Ethereum and then into NFTs over a two week period. Um, that, that kind of set me on this journey of, all right, like you're leaving corporate America, you're leaving that job and you're just gonna do crypto and NFT and Web3 is the, your life. Like that's what you're gonna do till the day you die. Um, and obviously along that journey, it's been like, all right, you're now a venture capitalist. Now you're doing consulting. Now you're investing in uh, or in founding DAOs and buying football clubs and just all these different things uh, has been kind of like, how do you balance all of this at the same time? Um, and that's why I have amazing people like Guy around me to, you know, slowly figure out ways to make it more efficient and scale the business and scale everything we're doing um, and really just surround yourself with the smartest people and the best people. So did you have, when purchasing those, I guess those first NFTs, have you had any of them that have been sort of life changing wealth creation events? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um I He's got a crypto punk. You, no, you I, I, I know. That. I'm going to let Hunter <laughs> tell us that. <laughs> and if he doesn't, path. we'll we'll peel back the onions <laughs> a bit further. Um, I mean, so like I I minted Bored Apes. Uh, that wasn't probably the biggest uh, wealth creator for me. I sold them early. I have one. I have mutants. Um, I mean, I have a, I have a very big collection. I probably have over a thousand NFTs right now. Um, but also on like the venture side, like I was a co-founder of Ready Player Down, it's a multi hundred million dollar organization. Um, I had, you know, there's one story I love to tell because it just shows the insanity of what my last two years or year and a half have been like. Um, I flew out to Malibu, I got a text, same guy about the football club, same guy, Jacob Martin, uh, text me while I'm in New York and I'm with, uh, with you know girlfriend's family at the time and, uh, it's like, what, noon? He's like, can you make it to California tonight for dinner? Paris Hilton, Fuocious, all these people are gonna be here. I'm like, 
I like I'm I was on like, the plane. <laughs> I'm on the plane. Okay. No, but that I literally, as he was doing, I bu- bought the plane ticket and got on a plane and flew out to California from New York. Um, and I went to this dinner and we're sitting at the dinner and uh, this guy next to me just won't shut up. He's like, you got to buy one of my photos. You got to buy one of my photos. Justin Aversano. Uh, he has a collection called Twin Flames, 100 photos. Every single photo is of a pair of twins taken around uh, the world, mostly that are in the US, but a few are international. Um, he won't shut up about it. And I'm aware of his work, aware of who he is. The next morning, uh, go to have brunch. He shows up out of nowhere, sits down at brunch. And I'm, the second he opens his mouth, he's like, so what do you think? You're going to buy one? I'm like, this guy just won't shut up. Like, when's he going to stop asking me? Eventually, I'm like, all right, I'll buy one. Like, let's do it. He's like, all right, what's the cheapest? $16,000 at the time, uh, 80th. Um, And uh, I'm sitting there and I'm like, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> literally buying a, a, this this photo so this guy shuts up. Um, <laughs> For 16 grand. Yeah. I, I saw the vision. Like, I was like, this is cool. I see who else owns it. And um, I was like, at the time, I had just made a huge investment into Ready Player now. And I had just made uh, a bunch of MeBit purchases. So I, I was a little bit strapped for cash. And I was like... I have a lot of conviction in this purchase, but it would be a little irresponsible to go pretty much like all in, like the last bit of money I had at the time uh, on this photo. So I start asking people for 40 ETH. I'm like, can somebody give me a loan? Um, so I text my brother. I'm like, hey, can you give me 40 ETH? What do you want it for? I'm going to buy a photo. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a short conversation. I, I asked my dad, no. Asked uh, college roommates. Uh, I was like, hey guys, I'm gonna do this. You know, I've been doing this NFT thing. I need, you know, I need, uh, eight, you know, 16000 or $8,000. Can you spot me? No. Um, it, it, everybody asked. And I it got to the point where I started even asking like friends I had made in the NFT space. I was like, hey, like, I wanna buy this photo. Do you wanna split it 50 50? And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, like, how much? I'm like, four ETH. And be like, not a chance. Um, and this went on for like three days. And the guy who had kind of helped me broker this deal and Justin, they were like, you have until tomorrow morning. This is like 10 p.m. Um, They're like, tomorrow morning, I have a buyer. He has the money. Uh, You either do the deal or, um, you know, I'm going to sell it to this other guy. And I started really freaking out. And this guy had been replying to all of my Twitter. Like every time I posted, he would reply and troll me. And I'm like... I'm just going to ask this guy for money. He's like bugging me. I'm like, Hey man, uh, you know, you seem really funny. We've had like a lot of fun, like interacting. I'm trying to buy this photo. I'm not sure if you want to, you know, send me money. Uh, and I like, was like, here's a photo of my ID. Here's my address. Here's where I live. Like, you know, do you want to send me four ETH? No, rep- I wake up the next morning. No reply. I'm like, Oh my God. Like I literally I could not get anybody to loan me money. Um, and I, I sit down the computer and I'm like about to tell this guy like, Hey man, you can just sell it to somebody else. And I look at my, my wallet and this, this guy literally just sent me 40, no questions or anything, no reply. He just sent me the 40th. Um, and I was like, okay, like let's, let's go. And so I called them. I'm like, let's buy the photo. I buy the photo. And, um, the guy who lent me the money, his name's Tropo farmer. Uh, he's a pretty big guy in the space now. Um, but I, I'm like, hey, like, you want to get on the phone and chat? And he's like, ah, yeah, like, we can talk. He's like, well, let me know when you sell it. I'm like, this guy is literally insane. He just sent me sixteen thousand or eight thousand dollars. Doesn't really care. Um, and he's like, I trust you. You know, you, I've seen you around, and we've never met. Don't know his first name. Haven't seen his face. Um, and so, like, a month goes by. We kind of, you know, gotten a little bit closer over time. And the photo now is worth, you know. $40,000. It's gone up a little bit. And I'm like, Hey, do you want to sell? Like, I don't really. And like, you know, where, where are we at? And at the time he's like, well, that was like the last of my money. So this guy is giving me like a significant amount of money that he can't really afford to lose at the time. Um, he had a board eight, but you know, really that was like, here's a big investment into a fr- guy I met on the internet. Um, long story short, over the next month or two, the photo started to rise in value. Um, so it went from being worth 16,000 to 32, to 60 to a hundred to 150 to 200,000. And every time it, you know, it, it would start to rise. I'd be like, do you want to sell? And he'd be like, whatever you want to do. I'm like, <laughs> 
dude, I have like a hundred thousand dollars of your money now. <laughs> and you're just like from a tweet from a, Yeah. And, and at the time I still had never met him in person. Like ever. I like, I still hadn't met him in person. Hadn't seen his face. Um, he had accidentally docked his doxed his first name to me when we jumped on a zoom call. Cause he logged in with his like, you know, work account or something. Um, but over time, this photo just keeps creeping up. And so it goes from like quarter million to 400,000 to 500,000. And after it crosses the $500,000 mark, I'm like, all right, maybe this is a good time to maybe grab some profits. Like, I think we're nearing the, the height of this collection market. And I have a lot of other places I can put this money. Um, but yeah, that purchase at $16,000 ended up being sold for about $590,000. Um, I negotiated the deal of that sale sitting in my work cubicle in the middle of the office, uh, screaming obscenities and negotiating with one guy in California, the other ones in Abu Dhabi. Uh, and when it sold, I literally grabbed my backpack and just walked and went home. Um, and then went back. <laughs> No, I, I I worked for a little bit longer. Oh, and, uh, the perfect end to that story just like never went back. Just had six hundred grand. From no, a the, the best just part left. is that I put the I printed out the photo and I just put it on top of my desk. And people be like, "Oh, who, are those your cousins?" And I'll be like, "Yeah, those are my cousins." <laughs> <laughs> Like no, nobody, when I had my corporate job, nobody had an idea like about anything I was doing. What was the corporate job? Uh, I ran artificial intelligence at Canon. Uh, okay. So I oversaw like their Skunk Works AI division and uh, doing a lot of the stuff that you would never expect a camera company to be doing in AI. Oh, I, okay. I've heard um, Gary, I think it was Gary and Kevin Rose talking about this on a podcast. It might've been, but they were, they were talking about the fact that they're very aware that some of the biggest assets people would could potentially own in their lives in terms of values are their NFTs, yep. own NFT, 100%. in terms of like significant wealth changing, life changing, yep. wealth creation events. Um, and and it's, are you aware of that when working on crypto projects? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, for me, it was I, I you know, I'd been uh, successful before NFTs to an extent. I had a software company. Um, I've owned multiple merch companies um, and did well investing. Uh, but for me, the real kind of spark, like the way it's possible to be a co-owner in a football club was through Web3, crypto and NFTs. Um, I mean, my board ape, I bought it for what, 350 bucks. It's currently worth what, like quarter of a million dollars. Um, the Chromie Squiggle is something I'll, I'll never sell. I bought that for... Three thousand dollars. That's currently worth twenty-seven. Like you know, th it, there's a bunch of assets that I own that'll just be historic pieces of art. I genuinely think that you haven't missed the boat. Everybody listening and talking right now is like, it's over. It's down. I still think right now there are pieces that can be bought that will be in years. It'll be like you know buying a Basquiat. It, it, you know, it'll be like really owning something that's so not valued correctly because I think we're going to see the traditional art scene really change their view on, you know, early crypto art or significant artists like X copy will go down as one of the most prolific artists of all time. The same thing with Eric Snowfro. He will go down as one of the most prolific artists of all time. The squiggle this, this will be only one of these will be, an incredible statement. The same way I think with owning a board ape and owning a punk, those will be like, wow. It'll be, it's like having a Ferrari in your garage, but it's a digital asset. It'll, it'll, it'll set people apart. Wow, what an interesting conversation. We could carry this on for hours and hours, but we've got to be respectful of your time because you one, need to leave what, in 12 minutes what's to the get one, back to Crawley for a documentary. <laughs> what's the one NFT that you would display center of your house in a nice frame? What's the one that you're proud of? So it's not the most expensive I own. Actually, it's my, uh, my phone background. It's this photo. It's hard to see here. Um, it is an AI generated image. Uh, so you can kind of see it's uh, just, it doesn't, it's, it's hard with the screen, but it looks like this woman who's in uh, like a dress carrying roses walking through a garden and it's done through AI. 
Um, and it's by an artist named Claire Silver. I think she's one of the best AI artists that's in the space. She's had uh, pieces go for sale at Sotheby's. Um, she, I, I think she's very underrated for, for where we are. And I think artificially intelligent, artificial intelligent generated images um, are probably one of the least mature parts of digital art right now or mm. art in general. Um, I think that's that piece is one that'll I'll never sell that. It'll always be in my house. I'll be on the wall. It's chrome, I chromey squiggle a fuzzy one. I'll never sell that. That'll be on the wall. Um, I do have two like must have pieces that I will put up, but I have to first acquire them. And I think that's just like, it's a financial decision. Like an autoglyph, I have to have one. I have to like, I think that's something that I can buy right now for a quarter million to $400,000 buy one of those. And in 10 years or 20 years, that's worth 10 to 30 million. I genuinely believe that. I think there's tens of millions of dollars literally sitting on the ground and you just need to obviously be able to financially afford that to begin with, but it, there, it's out there a hundred percent. What a fantastic conversation. Uh, Hunter, where can we go and support you and wag me and find out more information? Where should listeners go to go on the journey with you? Uh, so wag me United uh, is on all socials, Instagram, uh, Twitter is it's my a- favorite account guy, by the way. It's my favorite account. Wag <laughs> me. It's my, my go-to now. Whenever I go on, I'm like, what are wag me doing today? Well, I mean, guy, so guy is here with us in the studio. He runs uh, the, the wag. He does a lot of the stuff on the wag me TikTok, um, doing a lot of the stuff that you'll see coming on like wag me's YouTube videos. Um, so wag me is its own entity. Uh, and then on the Crawley Town side, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, it's Crawley Town uh, FC on, I think, all socials. Um, personally, uh, you can find me on every single uh, social media account as just Hunter Orrell. Um, I do a lot right now on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. Cool. Some stuff. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for making the time. Of, of course. Into Ilford. And now, um, what are you most excited about? Like, it, it, you know, it, only a football club is exciting in general. What's what's in the next sort of 90 days? What's coming up? You're like, that's unbelievable. I can't believe we're doing this. Um, specifically with Wagme and Crawl. In general, I'm going to leave it as an open-ended question. Um, oh, that's a good question. Oh, they're putting me on the spot here. Uh, Sorry, mate. I, I think you'll, one, you'll probably see, oh, wait, this is a really good question. Two things, two things I'll say on the, the Crawley Town Wagme side. One, I think you'll start to see the Web3 web component of this really start to grow some teeth. I think um, we've really just dipped our toes in and been very careful and selective on what we're doing. I think you'll start to see that, like, what happens when Pixel Vault devs start putting out stuff uh around like here's infrastructure for how you can use your nft or what how do you gamify being a fan of a football club um i think you'll start to see that come out uh i also will make the prediction and the uh kind of foreshadowing that you'll probably start to see wag united and crawley town become globally known brands and have fans that you can have a Chelsea, a Crystal Palace fan, a Dallas Cowboys fan. You can be a, not even know about soccer wearing Crawley Town jerseys. Well, there we go. Interesting times indeed. Uh, guys, if you have enjoyed this podcast episode, click the link in the show notes now. All of the links to all of the various places will be in there. You can go and find Hunter, find the Wagme United accounts and find out everything that they're up to. Um, but we'll be back for another episode. Um, I th- could we buy a football club? Is there, any, is there an Ilford town? I'm definitely going to go on OpenSea and buy a Wagme United NFT. I that much. <laughs> There's only one on there. Is there? There's only one on there. I'll race you. Hunter can get me one. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, yeah. Awesome stuff. Thanks for listening in, guys. We'll be back for another episode of Understanding Crypto very soon. Mm-hmm.